All right, new notebook, new example. Again, we're going over uh, rational equations, which is in section P3. I'm on page 31 looking at exercise number 32, where we have 2x over x plus 3 minus x over x minus 1, and all that is supposed to equal 14 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. So our first step is to factor all the denominators. And the first two look pretty factored to me, but the third one looks like it could use some factoring. And it will turn out, quite often, but not always, um, that these two are probably going to be likely candidates for the factors. Let's see. Um, 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 then 3x minus x will be 2 plus 2x, and then x times x will be x squared. So yeah, these two are the factors of this denominator. So now, with everything factored, it becomes a lot easier to list out what the least common denominator is. And once we get that, we will multiply by it and get rid of these ugly fractions. And that's the whole point. Make this look a little bit better. So our LCD. First is x plus 3, and so our LCD is going to need an x plus 3 in it. x minus 1. Our LCD doesn't have that, so we should add to it. And I conveniently did not do the thing I was supposed to do, which is factor this last denominator. It's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 1, which x plus 3 in the denominator, we've got an x plus 3 in the LCD. So we've got it covered. No need to add it again. x minus 1 in the denominator, x minus 1 in the LCD, we've got this covered. So this is our LCD. So we're going to multiply everything, the left side, everything on the left, and everything on the right by the LCD. So when we do that, multiplying on the left, the first term gets multiplied by the LCD, so it's x plus 3 times x minus 1 times 2x over x plus 3, but we also multiply the second term, so it's going to be a minus then the LCD, x plus 3, times x minus 1, times x over x minus 1. So we have the LCD times the first term, the LCD times the second term. Now we just take the LCD and multiply it by the third term, the right-hand side of the equation, that is to say. x plus 3 times x minus 1, and that's going to be multiplying 14 over x plus 3 times x minus 1. And let's see what cancels. Uh, first term, the x plus 3's will cancel. In the second term, the x minus 1's will cancel. And in the last term, we've got x plus 3's canceling and x minus 1's canceling. So very nice. What are we left with in the first term? Well, x minus 1 times 2x. We can write that as 2x times x minus 1. What's left over on the second term? x plus 3 times an x. So we can write that as x times x plus 3. And what do we have left over on the right? Well, not much, just the 14. All right. Distributing. Let's see. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times minus 1 is minus 2x. Minus x times x is minus x squared. Minus x times plus 3 is a minus 3x. And this is equal to 14. Let's see. 2x squared minus x squared is 1x squared minus 2x minus 3x is a minus 5x 
and then on the right we just have 14. So what do we have here? We've got x squared, we've got x's, we've got some numbers. What we have here is a quadratic. So in our next step, to solve this much nicer looking equation, we're going to solve a quadratic, which means we're going to have to move the 14 to the other side, subtract 14 from both sides, so we end up with one side being 0, which in this case is the right hand side. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. Are we going to be lucky enough to have this factor? Let's see. Leading coefficient is 1, constant term is minus 14, those multiply together to a minus 14, and can we get factors of minus 14 that add up to minus 5? How about minus 7 and 2? Minus 7 plus 2 is minus 5, minus 7 times 2 is minus 14. So we're going to have x squared, 1x squared, minus 7x, plus 2x, minus 14. And that equals 0. Now look at the first two and last two. What's in common with the first two? x squared minus 7x, well, it looks like there's an x in common. And when I pull that out, I'm left with x minus 7. What's in common with 2x and minus 14? Well, looks like a 2. And if I pull 2 out, I'll be left with x minus 7, which is nice, because now the things in parentheses are equal, and I can therefore factor them out. So I'm going to factor out x minus 7, and pulling x minus 7 out in the first term leaves me with x, in the second term, pulling x minus 7 out leaves me with plus 2. So now, the whole purpose of solving quadratics, get them so, or at least factoring them, is to get it so we have two numbers multiplying together to get 0. Which we conclude could only be the case if one of those two numbers, say x minus 7, or x plus 2 was equal to 0 themselves. If x minus 7 is the culprit, if that's 0, then x is 7. But if that's not the case, if x plus 2, if this thing is 0, then x ends up being equal to minus 2. Now you're not done. Not done because you could have some extraneous solutions. It could be the case that when we plug these back in, we don't get a real solution. That's only going to happen if any one of the denominators is zero. So we want all the denominators to not be zero in order to take a solution. Let's see about seven. We can even look at the factored one down here, which might be easier, but either one doesn't matter. Um, I imagine you'll look at the first one, so I'll go ahead and do that one as well, but you can look at the factored version. Uh, let's see, 7 plus 3, 10, 10's not 0. 7 minus 1, 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 isn't 0. Uh, let's see, that's 49. 49 plus 2 times 7, 2 times 7 is 14. 49 plus 14 minus 3. 49 plus 14 minus 3. I don't know what that is, but I know it's not 0. You know, subtracting 3 from 49 and 14 doesn't get me close enough to 0. I'm still a large positive number. So x equals 7 is a solution. What about minus 2? Minus 2 plus 3, that's 1. Not a problem minus 2, minus 1, minus 3. Hey, negatives in the denominator, not really a problem. It's only 0 that we're worried about. Minus 2 squared, that is 4. Uh, 2 times minus 2, that's minus 4. Oh, okay. 4 plus minus 4, 4 plus minus 4 is just 4 minus 4, which is 0. So we have 0 minus 3. 0 minus 3 is minus 3 and minus 3 isn't 0. So 
both solutions work. And then next, we're going to move on to section P4.